Alright, hello everyone, it is Nigel here once again, and welcome to another episode of System Shock Radio. So, uh, this is, of course, episode 67, and then without further ado, let's get right into it. So, the first topic that we're going to talk about, and not a whole lot of topics for this one, is going to be about WWE going back to TV 14. So, that's right, the PG era in WWE is seemingly, officially over or so WWE starting with SummerSlam uh, people mistakenly thought it was going to be uh, Raw th- this uh, week uh, th- this uh, previous Monday but no it's actually going to be SummerSlam and where the TV14 thing uh, TV14 everything starts so uh, it's listed as TV14 in the advertisements and everything so uh, WWE looks like it's going back to TV14 content now uh, WWE has been TV 14 since around 2008, uh, when the Ruthless Aggression era was coming to an end, and we were moving to the uh, seemingly dark days of the WWE within the PG era. So, what does this mean? Uh, does this mean that storylines will get better? Does this mean WWE will have more, more um, will have more edgier, or and more like? A, do, do more like dangerous stuff will blood be a thing again will chair shots to the head be a thing again um we're not sure yet uh I'm, i know i'm not entirely sure yet uh i i kind of know what to expect but at the same time it's kind of a wait and see sort of thing i know that this lo- this mainly means that WWE will have more freedom when it comes to their storytelling where they're able to produce more adult oriented content which WWE he looked like has slowly been going back to who uh over the pat over a little while starting with kind of like last year and then uh, as we're seeing this year, they've slowly started going back to that anyway. So now, I guess they can like full blown go uh, go crazy with it, I guess. And um, d- this doesn't automatically mean though that storylines will be more interesting. The storylines could still be a, like as like crap as ever, just now with uh, edgier stuff. Uh, some d- realizes that, and I, it's something I firmly believe is that the thing is. Not that WWE is PG, because there's stuff that's PG that's like for kids that can still be interesting and engaging. Look, look at all the cartoons that are for kids uh, with ki- with a uh, kid friendly stuff and not really swearing or anything like that going on, and they're still interesting. They're still fun and compelling. And for, for a lot of time, it seemed like a lot of people believe that. Uh, the fact that WWE isn't TV-14 anymore, the fact that it's not geared towards adults anymore, is uh, the problem. But I say it's the storytelling, because, because we've seen examples in the past of kid-friendly storytelling in anything, like I just mentioned, being good. But we've also seen stuff where more adult-oriented stuff was bad, where uh, it sucked, it wasn't uh, great, it wasn't good at all. It uh, was not appealing or entertaining or interesting. So, um, until the storylines are fixed to where they're interesting and everything, uh, WWE will stay uh, where they are. And, uh, like I said, uh, the whole going to TV-14 will be will uh, give them more freedom to be able to do more adult-oriented stuff and hopefully have a bit more creativity and more leeway with the storylines to concoct and everything but that's just it the storytelling needs to be interesting and it needs to be there there needs to be effort put in and things will be uh fine but uh, let me know what you guys think are you excited of w going back to tv 14 or not uh me personally i'm interested to see where this goes so the next thing i want to talk about is dream matches so there's been a lot of dream matches uh that have been pitched it by many, and I kind of talked about a couple of them that I was interested in in the past. Some matches that either could happen or or could never happen. But the whole point is that they haven't happened yet. Sorry, there was a, a spider crawl on my arm. Thankfully, it was a small one though, and thankfully it hadn't bitten me yet. It, well, man, I could have gotten cool superpowers. Eh, anyway, uh, there's lots of dream matches that uh, I want, want to see, and that a lot of people have wanted to see in the past, but 
have never happened and are likely never going to happen uh, for a variety of reasons. Either they weren't in the same company, uh, one of them is deceased, and that, therefore it can't happen that way. But uh, some of the ones that spring to mind is, of course, the big one. The big one that everybody's been talking about, Sting versus The Undertaker, which, uh, believe it or not, has technically happened. Uh, but this was before uh, Mark Calloway became The Undertaker. This is back when he was me, Mark Callis. And they faced off. Uh, I forget where, but it was a long time ago. There's no real footage of it existing, but uh, apparently it happened. Uh, there's that. Uh, some people have put like Kurt Angle versus Daniel Bryan, which would be a really good one. Kurt Angle versus Bret Hart, which theoretically could have happened if Bret Hart wasn't in WCW in 1999. Uh, there, there's stuff like that. Uh, the ones that we have had fulfilled over the years, such as like Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Uh, so matches like that at, or uh, John Cena versus Roman Reigns. Uh, and there's plenty of other ones that still, that still could theoretically happen if uh, things line up. For example, a uh, match I kind of want to see is John Cena versus Kenny Omega. Uh, the biggest star in WWE versus arguably the biggest star not in WWE, uh, who, who's been not in WWE for ages, who's really made a name for himself in everywhere except WWE. Uh, having them collide would be pretty cool. Uh, one that got fulfilled, but I haven't seen the match yet, I wanted to go check it out, is uh, Jeff Hardy versus Darby Allen, and it happened on Dynamite, so I uh, gotta check that out at some point, and I may even review it, I'm not sure, but dream matches are fun, and they're fun to speculate, and they're fun to talk about, because there's stuff that either uh, could happen or could never happen, but it's still interesting in, uh, how people would pitch them happening, and uh, the outcomes that could be predicted uh, with these matches happening. But uh, next up, we're going to talk about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which unfortunately has been delayed till next year. Er, sad, but I'm still hyped for the movie, nevertheless. As, uh, of course, it's a sequel to the uh, first movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and uh, definitely a fun movie, definitely an exciting movie, probably one of my absolute favorite Marvel movies. Uh, the movie was gorgeous to look at. It had heart, it had emotion, it had humor. Miles Morales did a great job as like the starring role and everything. And so that movie was really fun. And to see them making another movie, and it's gonna be a two-parter, uh, that's gonna be pretty interesting as well. And the fact that they got Spider-Man 2099 into it, and the fact that Miles' appearance has been tweaked, and he looks even better than he did in uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I'm excited for this movie, and I want to see how it goes. Will they bring back the heroes from the other parts of the u from the other universes? Will they bring some new ones in? They didn't even have people like uh, the Scarlet Spider, aka Ben Riley, be uh, coming in. And so, who's gonna come in? Who's gonna be a part of this Spider version? Uh, how, how are they gonna pull this off? I'm interested in to see where it goes. And I, and I talked about uh, in previous episode of System Shock Radio, which if you haven't already, go check that out, episode 66. I talk about not really going to the movies anymore, or that much, unless it's a movie I really want to see. This is a movie that I really, really do want to see when it does come out, so I am definitely going to be there when it comes out. And then finally, my final topic is, I want to talk about no versus not yet. So, Oh, uh, and I, I guess I'll also go back to this point I made in episode 66 where some stuff uh, won't happen in your life and some stuff can't really happen in your life no matter how hard you try at it. But there's some stuff that will be accomplished in time. And sometimes there's things that happen in your life if that you want to uh, achieve. There's stuff that you want to achieve and things that you want to do but because it doesn't happen within the time frame you originally thought it would happen and oftentimes it discourages people and I know because I've been there plenty of times there's stuff that I thought would happen uh, at a certain moment and it didn't happen and I was upset by it but then when it eventually did happen I, I reflect on it and say I'm glad it didn't happen yet and I'm glad uh, I held out on it and, and I was able to uh, hold, hold out on it and um, be able to who, uh, do this later on because if I did it there, there would have been problems and I don't think it would have 
panned out as well if it happened at that moment versus it happening later on down the line. And something you have to realize is that sometimes I'm, there is a no, and sometimes the no is like it's not going to happen, and it may not happen. But a not yet is it's not going to happen yet. Uh, the thing about making a cake, you got to take time, you got to let it bake, you got to have to combine all the ingredients, you still have to let it bake. If you take it out too early, it's not going to turn out right, it may be undercooked, and uh, it may not taste as well, but if you if you just let it do its thing, and I, you know you want the cake immediately because it's delicious. Cake is delicious, uh, at least if you think cake is delicious. But um, you, you want it immediately because it looks so good and it's going to taste so good. But you got to give it time to uh, cook and to bake, bake or else it's not going to taste right. It's not going to be as good. There's some stuff in life that you got to let bake. You got to just uh, let it sit there and don't let it sit there too long or else it may uh, end up not happening because you didn't take any action to it but there's some stuff that uh, can't happen yet that you have to wait for her and once you wait for it you'll be glad that you waited and you'll be glad that at the not yet was a not yet because when it does happen later on for you in life you'll be glad it happened at that time and, and when you reflect on your life you'll be glad that it didn't happen at that time the uh, power of hindsight is an incredible one and uh, who, who knows uh, host, for example I'll give you guys an example so uh, Brian Danielson aka Daniel Bryan however you refer to him at one point was employed by WWE around I believe like 2002 and everything and uh, he had been pretty new to the business at the point where he was wrestling and he got released he's uh he was part of obw w cut its ties with obw and so daniel bryant ended up getting released because of that and and uh and uh the thing is though it was a blessing in disguise because had he stayed with the w style he would have been good but he even he admits he might not have been as good but if he had actually stuck with W style, but because he got released, he got the opportunity to go to Ring of Honor and then New Japan and then hone the style that really made him famous and the style that we all know and love from Brian Danielson slash Daniel Bryan today. Hey, hey uh, you know, the technical wizardry and the strikes and everything and the, that submission gravel based stuff that uh, he's renowned for. He's considered one of the best technical wrestlers alive. and. Uh, he would come back to WWE, he would re-debut and everything, and he'd have an incredible career there because he was such a technical master, because he had been in Japan and Ring of Honor or, uh, before coming back to WWE. But if he had stayed with WWE, it might not have been as good because that's not really WWE's style. Uh, the, their style is more about like sports entertaining and everything. And they're more about putting on a show, which, uh, pro, which that's mainly the core of pro wrestling, yes. But uh, when it comes to the style of like uh, New Japan or Ring of Honor, they take things a bit more seriously. And him being trained in that style allowed him to hone the skills that he had to this day. And had he stayed with WWE, he might not have the style that made him so well renowned today. Hey, so, oh, sometimes be thankful for the not yet, but your time will come, trust me. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if this is your first time watching uh, Sister Shock Radio, welcome. I'm, I hope you enjoyed, and I'm glad you were able to join me here, and hopefully you come back in the future. And if you're returning, I thank you, who I hope you enjoyed as well, and I uh, thank you for your continued support and everything. So, uh, we've got we got uh, episode 68 also on the way. I'll probably do that either uh, later on tonight or tomorrow. While well, I am recording this tonight, it's probably not going to be up until tomorrow. Oh, and uh, I may record uh, the next episode tomorrow. And I got some Tales from the Labyrinth to record as well. And then, of course, we're going to be live uh, Saturday night for System, not for System Drive, for uh, Tales from the Labyrinth. And then uh, live on Sunday, a uh, afternoon for System Shock Radio. So stay tuned for those. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace.